children are way younger accessing technology, and that makes us think, well, what should we do about all that? You know? And well, the answer is embrace it, but embrace it with your eyes open. Smartphones before they even start school, it's a really good idea. Let's just take a moment to think about why. You give them crayons before they start school. You give them books nowadays at three or four months. What's happening in the brain is interesting. You've got, you've got a brain full of neurons, but only about 7% of them are doing remembering. You know, remembering this, rem the rest of them are doing what you do so well, making sense of chaos. It's help them build concepts, help them build understanding. You wouldn't want to keep them away from all that any more than you'd want to keep them away from a crayon or a pen or a book or a handshake. You know? Kids who have early exposure, as we see all around the world, are really quite happy to put their phone down and leave it for a week or so and then say, oh yeah, where's my phone? Pick it up. Well, you, you make them wait till they're nine or ten before buying them a phone. I challenge you to get the phone out of their hands without a crowbar. Screen time. You want them to be out running around the park. You want them to be doing cool stuff. It doesn't mean this technology doesn't allow them to do that. You want them to be doing stuff like running around the local park, leaving the trace of a Christmas tree on the park, which is quite hard to do. You know, if you put your phone in your back pocket and you go and run around the park, you think how hard that is. You think of the estimating skills, the maths, the collaboration, the planning. You know, you think how hard that all is. So of course, you want them to be outside doing cool stuff. You, know, you don't want them to be just sat. We're the generation that sat and watched, gawped at television. The passive viewing era is gone, really. You know, you're trying to engage them in their interactivity, trying to engage them, trying to pull them out of the dopamine rewarded passivity that television is so good at building. And I'll tell you what, you'd be amazed at what happens when you do all that. Be the annoying parent. So, you know, say, Oh, how does all that work? You know, show me how you do that. And so if I really wanted, if I wanted to do this, what would I do? And, uh, you know, just keep asking questions because the world's full of kids that can work computers, kids who can work computers and be articulate about them, scarce and valuable. So, you know, the more, you, the more you annoying you are, the better that is for him, of course. I'm not a fan of technology in the bedroom. You know, bedrooms are private space and if you go in and be annoying, in the, but what's all that about? In the, what's he doing? That's really interesting. How could I do that? It's hard to do in the bedroom. If it's in the social area of the house, that's a good place to be. So again, you know, you bought your kids' phones, but the charger is downstairs, and eventually when they go to bed, they leave them behind. And you know how important that absolute sleep is. Proper dark, light in the space, television that's on as they go to sleep. They really, you know, look at the, look at the, look at the sleep patterns. They're not sleeping as well as you don't sleep as well in a part lit room. You know, it only takes three LED lights in a room to ruin your sleep. Kids are desperate, you know the figures. Kids need to sleep for way more time than you need to sleep. Granddad, she was saying, um, I tried to FaceTime you the other day and FaceTime was off. I said, well, Emily, I might have been working. She said, I know you might, but FaceTime was off. So, you know, <laughs> she was like, you know, of course, if you're working, we won't have a conversation, but why would you turn it off? You know, so she's in that world of always on uh, thinking. She's in that world of connectivity. Jersey's economic future depends on that world of being always on. Depends on your kids being able to be global citizens, to be connected to everybody else, to have the ingenuity and the strategy and the problem solving and those internal taxonomies of understanding that allow them to get the jump on the kids in Singapore and China. How many schools on Jersey altogether? I tell you what, it's not very many compared to the 1.17 million schools in China. The so your kids are going to really go hammer and tongs if they can have a role in all this, and not going to end up being passive viewers watching the world economy go by. If you want them to have a role, they've got to be active with the tools that are part of this millennium. So you know, go off and be brave parents. Scare yourselves a bit, uh, and and buy them stuff now. Thank you very much. <laughs>